Welcome to Blaine High School for Section 5-4A Girls Basketball. A semifinal matchup for you today. The number four seed, Spring Lake Park, taking on the top seed, the Park Center Pirates. Hi, I'm Jay Wilcox, along with Patty Sorensen, the former head coach and former assistant for Park Center. And uh, obviously a great season for the Pirates, Patty. Just four losses on the year. They're looking to get back to that section final, but this is not a game they can afford to overlook here on this Saturday afternoon. Oh, definitely not. Once it comes to postseason play, you can't look past anybody because everybody's got nothing to lose. You're going to give everything out. They're going to all leave it on the line, and they're going to make it a competitive game. Spring Lake Park coming in with a victory over Champlin Park in the quarterfinals. They played very well on that one. I think that probably has them feeling a little bit confident. They know Park Center is a very good team. They know they're going to have to really play well to stay in this one, but they kind of are cautiously optimistic that they can do that. Well, I think so. I think they're believing that, you know, they've got a game plan set up. They've made some adjustments. They've played Park Center twice. They know some tendencies and things that they have to change from the past, and I believe they think that if they make those changes, they've got a chance for themselves. Let's take a look at key players in this one, starting with Spring Lake Park. And uh, we got a pretty balanced attack, but Joel Talso is definitely one that kind of makes things go for them, too. Well, I think Joel's their, their leader, their go-to on the floor. She's someone that can drive the lane, attack the bucket, but then she can shoot outside, too. You know, and that's one of the things Spring Lake Park has done as of late. They've come on, they've been putting up a lot of threes. And, and if they're going to get the shots, they're going to take them. They get warmed up, and she gets warmed up, she can put them down. And for Park Center, it's a little hard to overlook the uh, totals that Adalia McKenzie's been putting up in the second half of the year, multiple times over 40 points. Wow, what a great player. You know, she, she's a physically strong player. She's an aggressive player. She doesn't, she doesn't rest on any place, and she goes hard all the time. She'll take it to the bucket. It's fun to watch. I always joke with her that I think she's padding her rebound stats because a lot of her points she gets back is putting her own rebound back up. But she's going to get on the boards. She's quick. She can get out. Her, the teammates, they all look for each other. She looks for them to outlet. They look for her to outlet. Uh, she, she's a fun player to watch. All right, we'll see who will advance to the section final here. Our first semifinal is Spring Lake Park and Park Center, and it comes your way next here on CCX Sports. dent in that? This one? No. Were you texting and driving again? Yes. Hi, Leah. Hi, Dad. Sorry about your bumper. Welcome back here to Blaine High School as the crowd about to meet the starters for tonight's game, today's game, uh, Spring Lake Park and Park Center. And joining us on the sideline once again today will be Allie Arlt. Let's go over to Allie. Hey guys, something to keep an eye on today is Park Center's coverage of Spring Lake Park's leading scorer, Maddie Ngene. In their first meeting this year, she scored 18 points on the Pirates. In game two, just seven. Coach Metcalf said after that first game, they went back and reviewed film, and they noticed tendencies in Ngene's game that they were able to take away from her in game two just a couple weeks ago. They also changed up switching up different defenders on Ngene throughout the game to wear her down, so expect to see more of that today. For SLP, Coach Etherton said, and Gene struggles with going up strong in the paint. So she's going to be playing extra aggressive today with the entire season on the line, guys. Thanks very much, Allie. And there is Randy Etherton, the Spring Lake Park head coach. And he said, I, we're realistic with the girls. We know Park Center's 23 and 4 for a reason. We know they beat us twice. But if we do all of the things that we're kind of laying out and trying to do, then, you know, we, we, we feel like we have a shot. And that's all you can hope for at this time. Here's a look at the starters for the Panthers, who come in at 15 and 12. The Talso sisters, Karen Richard, Avery Dunbar, and Ngene for 
Spring Lake Park and for Bart Metcalf and the Pirates, Celia Ragulan, Tanae Griffin, Kayla Cox, Lauren Frost, and Adalia McKenzie. As the Pirates uh, kind of had a, a relatively easy one, I guess you'd have to say, in the first round over Irondale. And, uh, but uh, definitely you expect it to get a little tougher each round. As you see, these teams played uh, in the last day, game of the regular season. That was a 20-point victory. The first time was uh, just a slightly larger, about 25-point margin. Now, 20, I'm not going to try and sell that as a close game, but it's close enough that Spring Lake Park doesn't feel like they're just, you know, hopelessly outclassed and have no chance. I agree. I, said, I think Spring Lake Park in that second game felt that there were some things they could have done that they were being able to do, some things that they've changed and what they've done, and, and like Coach talked, some things they've done differently as the season's progressed. And, and if that continues to work for them, I think they feel that they... You know, like he said, it's it's going to be a good, they're a good team. Park Center's a great team. Their team has to come ready to play and, and follow their game plan. And Barb Metcalf was honest about when I said, you know, are you worried about just kind of the Saturday afternoon and about a team you've already beat real bad twice? And she said, yeah, absolutely. You know, sometimes you're looking ahead. And it, it, they're high school kids, and that can happen. I think that's a big, that's so true. I mean, they are. They're teenagers, and as much as you're trying to prepare them, you got to look at this 0-0. Zero, zero. you got to erase all those scores from before. You just need them to come out and play. Chipped away and a near steal there by Griffin. The other thing she talked about was not getting in foul trouble. They're, a, they're an aggressive team, and they're not a particularly deep team, so that's something that they'll uh, have to... You know, keep an eye on today, too. How is the game being called? How much can we, you know, bump a little bit or or uh, get up and, and really be aggressive defensively? And I think that's a, a huge learning for curve for stu kids and, and young athletes to realize you've got to figure out how the game's being called, and you have to adjust because they're not going to adjust how they're calling it. And the sooner kids realize that, it, it gives them a better opportunity. And that pass slipping through in Gene's hands and a steal by McKinsey. McKinsey will go all the way for the layup and that's uh, probably not the last time we'll see that today. She is uh, great at jumping and passing lanes and then just has great speed and strength getting up court. It's a lot of fun to watch when they get out like that and they, they do, they want to get out and move. Talso shot spins around but won't drop. Kayla Cox rebounding for the Pirates. Griffin down the baseline, no good. I asked Coach Etherton, you know, if they want this pace to be slower, and he said, well, not necessarily. He said, we like to score a lot usually against Park Center. We probably can't get in and running up and down game, but they are not looking to, you know, hold the ball or anything like that. No, I think they want to keep a tempo and it, changing it completely right now and trying to do something like that I don't think would work to the talents of his, his athletes. There's a look at Coach Metcalf. Last year, first season at the helm, uh, got him to the section final, but they did not have a particularly good game, and Roseville ended up knocking him off. So he would like to get back in that spot again. And Genny going to the hoop this time, wouldn't go. Tip loose, and Cox controls it. I think Kayla Cox is one of those fun players to watch on the board. Ragulan with a runner would not go. Joel Talso the rebound. And she sees an opening and takes it to the hoop and scores it there. Pirates backed off just a little bit for a second and she saw some space to go. Now they're gonna have to pay attention to Talso. If they, she's gonna look to attack. She likes to shoot outside, but if they're gonna let her attack, she's gonna take it. McKinsey down the lane over to Lauren Frost and that one is short. And out of bounds it will be Spring Lake Park basketball. There's a look at Coach Etherton, and uh, I, li I really like the, you know, the way he talked about telling his girls the things that, uh, you know, that being realistic about it with Park Center, and and uh, you know, knowing that we've got some things that we think we can do. We we didn't shoot the ball as well as we would have liked last time. And Genny trying to go to the hoop there. That one off target, maybe partially blocked. Frost pass was tipped, but McKenzie came up with it. However, her foot was on the end line. You know what, I agree with Coach Etherton. You've got to talk to your kids and you've got to tell them, you know, and I think the kids value that. You know what, yeah, they are a talented team, but if we do A, B, and C, we're going to put ourselves in a position. I think that paints it more realistic for the kids. 
Yeah, I don't think it's going out on a limb saying that if both teams play their A game, Park Center will win. I mean, that's 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 true. That is certainly true. That's going to be an offensive foul on Ingeni. McKenzie was out trying to deny the pass, and the official taking a good close look at it, and he, it's an interesting one. Oh, she had her hand up on the shoulder a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Not often that you'll see the offensive player in that spot getting called for the foul, but you could see a reason for it when her hand got up and kind of tried to hold McKenzie off. Here's McKenzie turning and shooting. No good. Pirates cold from the floor so far. I think both teams, it's, it's, it's that tournament, you know, last game could be where well, one team it's going to be their last game. Just a, a little, get, not in the flow of either of their game real well yet. And, you know, you're in a gym that you've played in, but it isn't either team's home court either, so you're not quite as used to that. Oh, we get a foul there on Griffin, it looks like, as the rebound came bouncing out there, and uh, Jocelyn Telso was knocked down. And today Griffin will pick it up. That's one, you know, as we said, one issue that's kind of plagued Park Center a little bit is uh, getting into some foul trouble. Exactly, and, and that one rebound came out, was a little late getting to it, picked up her first foul there. They've got to be smarter on that, and they've got to do a better job of attacking the boards and getting on the boards. Ragulin out defensively, and yeah, it's going to be a five-second call, boy. You don't want to uh, to get in a spot where Ragulin's able to get out there and just attack the dribbler like that. I mean, they've got some good quickness. It's an interesting mix with Park Center. They've got a couple of very mobile, talented players with some size up front, but then they've got some small guards that are really good too. You know, she's, you're right, and, and I love watching Aaliyah. She's pretty tenacious out there on top. She's, she's aggressive, quick with her feet, and, and she does a pretty good job of not getting herself into foul trouble most of the time. Over and back call there against Park Center as they've been a little bit disjointed offensively here. Both teams have, and it's a 2-2 two to two score here. Nearly four minutes in. And Genny goes down there as she was trying to post up hard against McKenzie. Almost had a little steal there. Now Joelle Talso, Cox on her. Back up top it comes. And that one in and out for Julia Levon who's checked in. Now Ngeni will shoot it up and she hits. It's a long two. And so her first bucket, good sign for Spring Lake Park as she's able to knock one down. Four to two lead for the Panthers, cross court pass. Now McKenzie will shoot a three. That one no good. And Genny the rebound and Spring Lake Park looking to push it. Ooh, I'll get a foul call on Ragel in there. A late whistle and quite honestly not the right call. As yeah. Jocelyn Telso just fell. I thought she did a great job, Aaliyah did, of getting back and defending that, that play. So Telso will go to the free throw line here. First one is good. In for Spring Lake Park now, Ashley Nienau. Interesting, Jocelyn's about four inches short, shorter than her younger sister. Second free throw is good as well. So six to two lead now for Spring Lake Park. Cross tapped in the corner and almost lost it, but it went out off of a Spring Lake Park foot. They threw a quick trap, a double team on her right there, and it luckily for her, it went off the other player. Frost takes the return pass. And then to Griffin from the corner, and that one is good for three. And the net got stuck there. Looks like they probably put new nets up for the playoffs. And sometimes that can lead. Yeah, they do look pretty brand new, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Nice little interchange there. Frost going and then Griffin just kind of fading out to the corner. Six to five lead for Spring Lake Park. Drive down the middle and the runner is up and good. Nice hoop there by Dunbar. 
You know, and Spring Lake's being very patient right now. They're, they're working, they're moving the ball, they're getting some good looks, they're reading what the defense is giving them. McKenzie attacks and scores. Just a strong drive to the hoop there. A quick first step and she was to the rim in a hurry and finishes strong. You know, it's fun to watch because she'll make that move, but she has such a soft touch when she puts it up. Chance to tie the game here if she can hit this free throw. And it is good. And McKenzie, she can definitely make threes, but to me, she's more of a problem attacking like she did there. I agree. I, I, I like to watch her when she attacks because she creates, and then a lot of times if it's not there, she's got her own rebound and, and lays it back up. She definitely can shoot from the outside, but I think her strength, her more her strength is attacking the bucket. Cox will swing it around. They go to the corner. Here's a baseline J for McKenzie, and that one is good as she's getting into a rhythm. Seven points right now. And the Pirates go in front, 10-8. Yeah, that was five quick points for her in these last couple minutes. Nino will shoot it up from the corner. Too strong, and Lauren Frost a rebound, but then had it yanked away. And the layup is good by LaVon. They, they can't be too patient or too uh, just eager to get out. They've got to realize right there again, they're coming at them. Nice steal in the open court by Dunbar there. Park Center not being careful with the dribble. From the corner, and that one way too long from Jocelyn Talso, and McKenzie pushes it. Over to Frost. Griffin will let it rip for three, and that's good. Tanae Griffin has made a couple of threes now, and the Pirates getting it going a little bit offensively after that slow start. Well, Talso, no good, and then an over the back call on the, Nino will be her second foul in a pretty short time frame here as she tried to go for that rebound. You don't really mind those, though, when you're, you know, as a coach, when they're just kind of get that rebound. You know, the fun thing with Tanae on that play, Tanae can drive. Tanae can post up inside, and she can hit outside, which makes her so valuable with her multi-weapons. And, and Park Center, realistically, all five on the floor, can hit from outside, and they can all attack. Griffin, nice cut by McKenzie. Will they count it? Yes, McKenzie was kind of fouled just as she was catching and shooting, and the official says, yeah, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt on that one. Thought it might be called earlier, but she just got it up and in. Nice hoop there. Good strength. That's what's fun about watching this team, too, is they look, they, there's some passes that they make in there on the kids, and it's a lot of fun to, to watch what they're able to, when they see their teammate and they can finish. Well, that's a second foul on Ngeni, too, so double trouble there for Spring Lake Park. They get a three-point play against them for McKenzie, but also... One of their better players getting her second foul pretty early in the contest. 16 to 10, Park Center. Coach is going to leave her in right now. I think he needs her to be able to. And McKenzie had a steal, but then called for carrying. It kind of got caught on her hip on the way back up court. Yeah. So Spring Lake Park turned it over, but then it go as a turnover and then turnover back the other yeah. way. I think McKenzie had the ball long enough to be considered possession there. There's a kind of forced shot maybe a little bit for the Panthers and it won't go. Park Center feeling good now after they started slow. Here's Frost driving and it rolls around and out and getting the rebound for Spring Lake Park. You know and that's one of the things Coach Etherton talked about in the beginning. They've got to limit their turnovers. Three up, no good, and McKenzie wins the fight for the rebound. Griffin wants another three, this time short. And getting the rebound for the Panthers. Ragulin playing some good D right there again, giving Dunbar trouble. That pass was deflected, I think. Yeah, I think. stay with Spring Lake Park. I think Delia got her hands on that one. Chloe Sink will come in for Park Center. 
Coming back in for the Panthers, Jocelyn Telso. Round to the corner and then dumped inside and tried to go back out. Raglan got a piece of it, but Panthers will recover. Joel Talso pitching it inside and getting a good position on sink, but missed the shot. Might have been a little bit what coach was talking about before the game where she's kind of fading away on some of those inside moves. And a tough chance there from McKinsey. Wouldn't quite roll in. Park Center's got to get the rest of their girls to go at the boards there. They, they didn't really have anybody aggressively attacking that one. Boy, and uh, Coach Etherton, that was one of the first things he really mentioned is we have to keep Park Center off the offensive glass. He said they just killed us with that in the uh, previous couple meetings. There's a three up and good for Richard. You know, and that's their game plan. That's what he said. He said, we've, we've been shooting a lot of threes, and we're going to continue to shoot a lot of threes. If they're going to give it to us, we're going to take it. And they're taking advantage of it right there. McKenzie's pass deflected and stolen. That's the Park Center. A, a few, uh, you, know, you see quite a few, and there's an open lane for the drive and layup. Park Center, a lot of their girls really like to go with that one hand pass off the bounce, and uh, you can see those getting deflected a few times here today. You know, a lot of kids want to do that pass, and, and it, it can be effective. I, I always was a pass that made me nervous because it's like you have to have more control. Park Center, I think, got a little mixed up on a defensive assignment there. And then uh, Raglan elected not to, you know, commit a foul there and just say, you know, probably we'll just concede the layup here more important than getting her second foul right in that spot. And, and I think a reasonable reasonable choice by her right yeah. there. I mean, it, we did. We, we had some miscommunications on assignment. She picks her up. But, yeah, don't give her a foul and put her to line, too. 18-14 lead. Oh, I'm sorry, they've got the scoreboard mixed up here. Yeah, did they? That, uh, We've got it right on the star screen, but I think up on the board here at They gave uh, the points Blaine. to. Yeah, and it's, let's hope they notice that sooner rather than later because it gets harder to fix when you try to go back later. And they're going to call yep. them over, and I think, and recognize that. Here's what, when you get these neutral site games, this happens a lot because nobody's the Bengals. You're used to doing blame games, and it's real obvious which team is your team, and you put it up there, and and uh, there you get a slight mix-up. And so, good job getting it corrected. No, right. no harm done. It just uh, and it, you know when you realize it right away, and that's where it's a good thing when you have the scorekeeper, the, the scoreboard operator communicating with the person who keeps the book, right? All, every time, you know, is this oh, what exactly. you have? Yeah, that that's so important that they do that. We've seen a number of times in playoff games, you know, that are out of high school where that happens, where you get mixed up on which is the home team. It can, you know, it's, it's very easy to see why that would happen. Leah picked up her second foul there. She went with that little runner and it didn't score. And then in the going after the ball, picked up her second foul. So she's going to come out for a little bit too. Just after we talked about her being smart for yeah, not taking the down foul here, the and, and You kind of wonder, was that a little frustration down there that we just got a little too eager? Drive and kick and another three up and it She's is feeling good it. for Richard. She's feeling it. Spring Lake Park, we mentioned, you know, they want to take a fair amount of threes and they want to take the right threes and right, right. now they are. Right. Near Turner over there for the Pirates, but then Spring Lake Park unable to control it. So the Panthers go back in front. Richard was open and ready and in good shooting position there. Well, and Dunbar even had the jump on Griffin as she was making the curve at the top of the key. It could have taken it to the hole too. And there's a long two by Griffin. Her stroke looks really good today. Yes. You know, and that's key. You know, you never know who on both teams, like both coaches said. Uh, coach for uh, Spring Lake Park, Etherton, he feels that he's got a pretty balanced, he's got a leading scorer, but balanced scores. Park Center, you really, I mean, yeah, you've got Adalia, but all of them have stepped up at different times to be a, a scorer. This three not close for Richard, and then we get a foul on the rebound. And officials going to confer, make sure that they have the same thing, and it looks like it's going to be on McKenzie. Did they call it on McKenzie, or did they call it on No, Cox? it was Cox, yeah, you're right. That's interesting, because I thought she was the one that had more of a possession of the ball at the time they are going for it. 
So Spring Lake Park ball they are even up with Park Center the top seed at 18 18. Back cut here and then also had to swing it back the other side. And that one way off and again he grabs the air ball rebound. Inside and the layup flipped up quickly there by Taylor Falvey getting the hoop. They got to like that because Taylor Falvey already is past what her average is. And there's another three by Griffin. She's been on fire. 11 points in this first half, nine of them on threes. The game can feel easy when those kind of shots are going in. I yes. mean, when you just uh, get in a rhythm and calmly knock down long threes like that. And you can see right now that Spring Lake Park staying true to their plan of, you know, they want to get the three because there's a couple shots I thought they could have maybe taken in closer and they've pivoted at reverse pivot and send it out for a three. Cox playing solid D there for the Pirates. Denny with it out top. And collided a little bit with Griffin and then lost it. Here's another look. Cox through the defender to her and Griffin stepping in and hitting. Spring Lake Park has had a couple nice backdoor cuts and that's where Flavie scored that last time and then she almost was open this last time too. 5.45 to go first half. Park Center is leading, but just by one. Spring Lake Park's played well. Here's Frost shooting it up. It's short. Oh, what a rebound by Griffin. No good. And then a foul after the second rebound was grabbed there by Anaya Rubin, who was checked in for PC. And this foul will be against Jocelyn Talso. You know, my message to Ruben when she's coming in, you get get on the boards, get us some rebounds. Griffin missed it, and there is Ruben grabbing yep. that one. Lauren Frost now to Griffin. McKenzie cutting, this time a foul on the floor before the shot, but it is foul on the Panthers. That'll be Nino's third already. Yep. Boy, nice timing on a couple of those cuts. A cut ball comes to the top of the key and, and McKenzie's just diving to the hoop. Here's McKenzie. We get a foul before the shot, it looks like, as she turned to pivot there. And this is going to be bonus time now. This foul goes against uh, Joelle Tulsa. So Dahlia McKenzie to the free throw line where she's knocked down a couple already as 10 first half points. Griffin and McKenzie actually have all of Park Center's points. No good on this free throw. Back the other way, a near steal there. Frost active defensively and we get a timeout taken by Spring Lake Park. I'm sure Coach Etherton is pleased with what his team is being able to do right now. Probably a little concerned with some of the foul situations on some of his players, but following exactly what he thought, Coach Metcalf's going to want to talk to her kids about, I mean, I feel they've given up some rebounds. If they would have controlled the board a little more on both ends, there would be some different things. So getting them back on, on rebounding, just getting to the flow of the game. Let's, let's run our offense, let's get the good shot, and, and then get, they're doing a better job on perimeter defense, but given up too many rebounds. And that's something that they oftentimes, you know, especially at the offensive end, are noticeably good at. Mm -hmm. You know, in a lot of ways, Spring Lake Park has to feel good, you know, to be where they're at within a point right now. But I think Park Center, their offense has started to click a little bit mm -hmm. more. I think they're going to, you know, the, the it just has the feel that they are going to be able to score, maybe not quite to the level that they do during the regular season because playoff games usually are a little bit, you know, lower scoring, but they've got the potential to put a lot of points on the board yet in this game. Definitely. And I anticipate we're going to see the, the rebounding going up on both ends for them too. It's like Park Center's 
trying to get out and pressure a little bit more on the outside. Telso shot no good. Rubin tracks it down. Here's McKenzie driving it and was fouled. Adelia can be so quick when she takes off. You know, like that. It, and if you're not adjusted and you're too tight, she's, she's gone by you or you're going to follow her. And that foul will be against Joelle Telso, her second. It actually, there was a reach before that that I thought they might call, but instead it was the blocking call on the second defender there, Telso. So. Yeah, because Tarrant Richard had actually grabbed her before that happened. It's kind of a tough ask. I mean, most of the players for Spring Lake Park or in this section or even in the state just are not as big and strong and fast as McKenzie. Oh. It's easy to say, you know, just move your feet and stay in front of her, but it's uh, a lot tougher to actually do. Well, and, and you look at, I, I know they're trying to get quite a few of these girls to come out on track. I mean, you look at Cox and you look at Raglan and McKenzie, those ladies are fast. And, and Griffin's not slow either. I mean, they have some quick feet out there. It's going to be a carry there. Spring Lake Park. Did a pretty good job of limiting turnovers early. That's become a little bit more of an issue. Well, and I think the intensity on, on Park Center's defense has picked up a little bit, which helps contribute to that. They're playing a little more intensity on defense, and it's caused a few more turnovers. Here's Cox shooting it up. That one off to the left, no good. Nice fight for the rebound, controlled by LeBon. And Guinea driving it. Raked away from her. It'll be out off of Park Center as Cox got all ball there on the strip. There you see the balance has been there for Spring Lake Park, whereas Griffin and McKinsey have all 23 for Park Center. And you look at that and you might say that's a problem, but honestly, I don't feel that way based on just the flow of the game. They've taken and made good shots. Well, right, and, and the other girls have been looking for them. They've, they've seen where they're, they're open and knowing who's got the hot hand. When, you know, with Griffin, when she was hitting them, let's get her the ball. This foul is going to go against Ngeni, and that'll be her third. As a great job by Cox to jump in and get her hand on that pass. And then as she tried to go to recover it, she was fouled. So definitely foul. It's an issue for the Panthers with uh, Nino and and Ngeni with three each, and Joel Talso with two. Cox free throw is good. I don't know if it's the brand new nets, but I, I kind of get the feeling that these are nice hoops to shoot on, nice rims. I mean, it doesn't. It, I, I don't know. It just it, the impression I'm getting is that these this seems to be a gym that you could shoot well in. Kayla got the bounce on that one. A little extra roll with that free throw. So five-point lead now for Park Center as they try and uh, create a little separation late in this first half against Spring Lake Park. Knocked away briefly there by Frost. Now you get the feeling that Spring Lake Park's, you know, being forced to rush a little more and, you know, just each pass is a little tougher than it was earlier in the game. And there's the turnover exactly. right there. Yeah, I think what's happening, and Park Center's doing a better job of communicating too, and... You know, that last uh, tap that Frost got, she did a good job of, you know, in the past I'd see her maybe go wrap around and end up with an unnecessary foul. Well, that time she was more composed on that, tapped it, got good defense, and was right ready to play D again. Cox goes to McKenzie, driving it on the baseline, then back out to Kayla Cox. She'll step in and shoot and hit the two-pointer there for the Pirates. So first basket by anyone other than McKinsey or Griffin for Park Center. For, uh, Cox had those free throws earlier, and then now her first field goal. Joel you know, and that's so the shot no good. That's the fun thing about Cox and Raglan of the starters out there. They both can shoot and score, but if it's feeding the ball to get the, the, the other person the shot, they're gonna do that. Yeah. It's been fun to watch them identify when was the time, but I've seen them both stand outside and hit down the threes or attack, so that's a nice weapon to have in the background. Another turnover by Spring Lake Park, and then a timeout, 2.52 to go in this first half, and Park Center now with its biggest lead at seven. And you can kind of sense that they've kind of you know, warmed up and they're really into the game at full cylinders now. And, and obviously, like we talked about, for and it's not an excuse for either team, but most games during the season are not played on a neutral court on Saturday afternoon at 1 o'clock. 
with no JV game before it or anything. So you come into the gym and it's just a little different feeling. There wasn't that many people here, you know, when they were warming up and all that. But you see the crowds filled in a little bit. Exactly. You know, it's just something to get to get used to. It's different. And then then get to the thought that it's like, okay, this this is playoffs. We we either we win or we go home. You know, so there's a little added. Uh, situation onto that one as they prepare for the game and it's funny a lot of times you do you see it takes teams a little bit to get going sometimes I always find it interesting how various coaches kind of deal with that part of it too I mean here's Frost shooting and no good you want to stress the importance of a playoff game yet at the same time you don't want your players to play up tight and tense and nervous right McKinsey called for the foul on the way back up court as she bumped the dribbler. Just the first, though, on Adalia McKinsey. There you get a look. Not a whole lot, but enough to kind of bump her a little bit. Also attacking, scores, plus a foul. This her second bucket here. Ruben will pick up the foul here with the help D. I was curious to see who that one was going to be called on. Yeah, it looked like it probably could have and maybe should have been on Cox. But uh, Ruben was there also. I thought Cox was really the one who hit her. But free throw too strong. McKenzie rebounds. So Pirates by five. McKinsey will stop and fire. It's short. And an opportunity here, a little run, run out. I don't know where uh, LeVon was hiding, but all of a sudden she was down out in front of everyone for the layup. That pass bouncing around. Pirates lucky to get it back. Well, just when it started to feel like Park Center was taking this one over, Spring Lake Park's come back with some nice plays. I think they've capitalized on some of the decisions Park Center's made. They came down, put that quick shot up, and and I think right now they're trying to be too aggressive, and now they need to get back in the flow of their offense, and Spring Lake Park has capitalized on it. So be a travel on Griffin. So the Panthers within three here, a little under two minutes to go in the first half. Dunbar ending it off, Joel Talso. With McKinsey on her. And Dunbar will shoot it up, no good, and a foul on the Panthers as they knocked Frost down while she grabbed that rebound. You don't like to jinx anything, Patty, but I, I gotta say, pretty well called first half, I think, by the officials, right? You know, I think it has been. <laughs> That's the third on Joel Talso, so that one is another That's tough blow as Nguyenay also has three. That's a big one. I mean, you've got three of their players with three fouls right now. Frost hits the free throw, and there's Telso in for Telso. As uh, presumably the rest of the half, we'll see her sitting too with three fouls. Frost makes a pair. That might be what gets her going, because you noticed after Kayla made her free throws, and she came down and hit a hit a bucket there. So maybe that's what a couple of them needed was a free throw and. Another turnover by the Panthers. Yeah, Frost has been quiet today, but boy, I've seen some games this year where she's really been good. Well, what's fun to watch about her is when she's not scoring, she's making some amazing passes to her teammates to get them on the scoreboard. Griffin driving, it was knocked away from her. Let's see who it hit last. It was out off of Spring Lake Park. I think that Tane has that height advantage right there, and with her, her lankiness, uh, turn on that one instead of drive, turn and pop the two-point jump shot. McKenzie chased out here. We're approaching a minute to go in the first half. Park Center leading it by five. They're the top seed here in the section. McKenzie driving, jump stop, no good. Good look at the hoop, though. You'd, you'd like that shot anytime yes. as a coach. Shot fake and then a little runner on the way in by Falvey who's got three buckets here in the first half for Spring Lake Park. Now Cox trying to answer and does. That was a tough shot. 
Yeah, Spring Lake Park has been doing a great job of reading. If they're going to give them the three, they're taking it. And so now Park Center's trying to compensate on that three, and they're giving them drives to the lane. Cox will pick up the foul this time. She thought she'd read it pretty well, but did appear to be more contact than when she had the previous trip. And so it'll be free throws here for Dunbar. You know, and the fun thing, Kayla can be very successful on that, but you're right, that time it looked like she got a little more than... So she will check out. Sink will come back in. No sense risking getting a third foul here this late in the half. Dunbar no good, and Rubin grabs the rebound. So Park Center with 20 seconds to go, leading by five. Chance for a last shot, but they're not going to do it. Here's the shot by Frost, no good, and then a tie-up as McKenzie went after the rebound. It will be Park Center ball. Well, and Ruben's done her job. She's come on and got on the boards for Park Center, which is exactly what they needed on both ends, and she's, but she's been working hard on both ends with the boards. Inbound and Frost, a quick shot, but wouldn't go now. And then they commit a foul, so Spring Lake Park with seven seconds will get free throws at the other end. Not a great sequence there for Park Center. They got a good look off the inbound play, but then Frost missed the shot and committed a foul. It's kind of one of those, what I would call frustration foul. You know, she, she missed that, and it's like she wanted to get it back too quick, and it's like, and it's hard for kids to control that. They want to make up for it, but it's like, got to be smarter on that. And the Panthers again missed the front end of the one and one as Richard missed it. Here's McKenzie, and it spins out. It looked like that one might go, but it didn't quite drop. And so we have reached halftime here with a 31-26 lead for Park Center. A, a good and entertaining first half of basketball. A lot to like, I think, for the underdog Panthers. But again, Park Center has uh, built a little bit of a lead. And now at five as they get set to make some adjustments heading to the locker room. Yeah, I think Spring Lake Park, is. They, they've played how they wanted to. You know, I'm sure there's turnovers that they didn't want, but they've done a good job on that. And let's go over to Allie now with Coach Metcalf. Coach, this is a playoff game. It's close, as expected. But what is keeping this game so close back and forth throughout the first? Well, I think you got two teams that want to stay alive. I mean, it's it's the one-game season, right? And Spring Spring Lake Park came to play, and so did we. So it's a, it's a good matchup. How do you get more players involved scoring offensively? Because Tanae and Dahlia have really taken a majority of the points in the first. Oh, yeah. You know, and that's one thing about our team. Uh, there's been times we've had three, four, even five different double-digit scorers at the end. We got another whole half, uh, and so we got to start recognizing those things. Uh, it, it's just it's a game of possessions right now, and they're slowing us down, and we got to push the ball up. What else do you want to see out of your team to create more separation to get this W in advance of the championship? we got to get on the boards big time. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Allie, and thanks, Coach Metcalf. 31-26, Park Center, our score at halftime. One of the younger fans in the stands enjoying this one as well. We'll be back with some highlights from the first half and hear from Coach Etherton as well as we get set for the second half of this semifinal in Section 5-4A girls basketball. Leah. Did you put a new dent in that? This one? No. Were you texting and driving again? Yes. Hi, Leah. Hi, Dad. Sorry about your bumper. <laughs> <laughs> what makes your community feel like home? Is it knowing what's happening in your neighborhood or when people know your name? Connections make us a community. For more than 30 years, Northwest Community Television has connected citizens, neighbors, even sports fans through video. As life gets busier than ever, we will still offer you a connected community experience through CCX Media so you can stay connected to the place you call home. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? 
simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button and from there choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. Good basketball game here today. Section 5, 4A semifinal. Park Center leading Spring Lake Park 31 to 26 as we check out some of our first half highlights in today's contest. And uh, teams obviously met a couple times in the regular, regular season, know each other pretty well. There's a steal by McKenzie in the early going and gets herself out and running for the layup early for Park Center. And then she drives and attacks, scores, plus a foul right there. Griffin was really hot from three. That's one of uh, three threes that she hit in the first half. Panthers though answered with some of their own. Richard knocked down a couple as well for Spring Lake Park and get a driving layup. Probably a little bit of an unexpected uh, contribution. Falvey with three first half buckets. There's another three from Richard as the uh, drive and kick game was working pretty well for Spring Lake Park. Griffin turns and squares up and knocks down another three right there for Park Center. And McKenzie getting it out. Cox with a nice strong move to get by the defender and then pull up for the jumper. As you see the first half scoring leaders, McKenzie and Griffin doing most of it for Park Center. Cox got going later in the half. Richard and Falvey with six each. Probably not the names you would expect to see at the top for Spring Lake Park as uh, Joel Telso held to four and Ngene held to two. Both of them with three fouls in that first half. So certainly something to watch in the second half as if uh, they can avoid picking up further fouls for the Panthers. Here's a look at the teams that advance. No real surprises in the first round. In fact, uh, really the Spring Lake Park Champlain Park game was the only one that was close at all. But when you get to round two, that semifinal round, Roseville and Centennial filing in a little bit ago and uh, getting ready to take the court after this one. And uh, then of course the winner of this game Meets the winner of that one. That'll be coming up on Thursday, and it's right back here at Blaine High School. We will come back in just a moment here as we get set for the second half. We'll hear from Coach Etherton and then jump into our second half of basketball here on CCX Sports. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. I got some Oxy after I hurt my neck. First, I took them to feel better. Then, I just kept taking them. I didn't know they'd be this addictive. I didn't know how far I'd go to get more. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. And let's go over now to Allie. Before the game, you said, we can't match this team basket for basket, but you really held your own in the first half. You guys are coming to the second with foul trouble, though. How does this change your game plan? Yeah, it, it, it's going to have to change a little bit. Defensively, I thought we got a lot of cheap fouls that we shouldn't have got, but unfortunately, it is what it is. So we're going to need to stay in the zone, get the rotation down, make sure we're communicating. Defensively, get back and limit the turnovers. They hurt us. Thanks for your time, Coach. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Coach, and thanks, Allie. As, uh, yeah, the late in the half, Spring Lake Park did switch to a 2-3 zone, and uh, sounds like that may be the case for some more of this second half. And that's kind of the one thing probably that bothers him, you know, heading into the second half. Overall, they executed a lot of what they wanted to do, and they're close enough, but the foul situation is a little tough. Well, right, and that's possibly going to, it's going to change what he's doing on defense for a little bit and see how, how they react with that. Floater there, way too long by Dunbar, and Park Center looking to push it back the other way. Ragillan back out, a near steal there, but McKenzie's able to recover it. Adalia McKenzie was fouled on the drive. They got a couple of hands onto her waist there, and that'll generally 
result in the foul call, and that's what we see. I think it's Richard that picked this one up. Well, and no. I think that's the, the thing for kids that's hard to follow. I mean, some places they're letting you touch a lot, and then the next place you barely touch. Cox had it blocked, but then stole it right back and then missed. And the Panthers get it. Three-pointer. Pull up from the corner is good by Jocelyn Talso. So Spring Lake Park back to within two. McKinsey, an air ball there. Here's what you know, we were talking about the you know the matchup and all of this and Spring Lake Park being an underdog. I always feel like when it's a team you've played in your conference a couple times, you're not quite as intimidated by seeing a brand new team that, you know, oh my gosh, they're so good and what are we going to do and all that. I've always thought it was hard and regardless of what your record and what the teams are compared to, to beat a team three times, you know, and, and just getting the focus and just trying to get them to play your game. I thought the last possession, the Pirates went a little too quick. I think they should have moved the ball a little more. And Joel Talso looking for the lead there. And it wouldn't drop from the top of the key. Here's Frost on the drive, spins out. And rebounded by Spring Lake Park's Richard. By the way, that last foul on Spring Lake Park was on uh, Dunbar, not Richard, as I first thought. Oh, that pass right through her legs, and Frost will come back the other way. Dishing over to Griffin was fouled by Richard. This time it is on Richard. A little bit sloppy for Park Center. They may be fortunate to come out of that with a foul situation. I agree. I think what she was trying to do, and I think she saw her coming, but the, the pass got a little messed up in there, that's for sure. Free throw spinning out for Tanae Griffin. She had a great first half, 11 points. By the way, I gotta say, Park Center, love the shoes. They've got the best shoes of any <laughs> team around. They do have some bright shoes, don't they? Second free throw good, so it's a three point lead here for the Pirates. Well, I like uh, the fact that they somewhat match too. You got the, the green and gold. There's another turnover by the Panthers. You get a look at some of them. That's Griffin, yep. and then they got a little variety pack there. I admit it took me some use getting used to that to see the shoes that were uh, that multicolored and different color from the rest of the team and all that. But I'm kind of over that now. Yeah, <laughs> it, I agree with you. And then you know wearing one one shoe of one color and the other the other. Griffin a miss there for Park Center. So Spring Lake Park into the front court here. They've continued to hold in this one real well. And, the, you know, they won 15 games there. I don't mean to make it seem like, you know, they didn't have any chance coming in or anything like that. Here's Frost driving it and was foul. Frost looking for her first good bucket. Yeah, she's had a little trouble finding the range here, yep. but uh, did a nice job driving that ball and was hacked pretty good there. A lot of times, you know, people say, you know, you're on the left side, you got to go to your left hand. I don't think she would have been fouled there if she didn't shoot it with her strong hand there. So I think that you kind of got to go with that. I mean, if it's a pure layup, sure, you might shoot that right. left-handed. But, but if, you can get, I mean, if you can get there and get to the free throw line and get them in foul trouble, that, that plays into your game plan too. And it worked on her favor there. She finished down with both those free throws. Frost with four points now, all of them from the line. Five-point lead for Park Center. I think seven is as big as it's gotten for the Pirates here. Spring Lake Parks always seem to have a little bit of an answer. No good on the three try there from Jocelyn Telso. And it will stay with Spring Lake Park. Spring Lake Park is still being able to put their threes up and and this one hit by Richard as she bombs a high rainbow to pull her team back within two. Cox out to McKinsey. Little stutter step move and the floater will not drop. You know, and, and Spring Lake Park's zone is, is getting done what they want done and they're getting good opportunities on the other end of the floor. 
Too strong there as a shot for the lead. Now here comes Ragulin. Looking for Cox, she'll drive it to the hoop, in and out though, and a nice rebound by Telso. Boy, they must have really emphasized defensive rebounding all, rebounding all week in practice. And there's Ingeni scoring to tie it up. Done a nice job blocking out. Park Center really did some damage on the offensive glass during the regular season against Spring Lake Park, but they've seemingly done a much better job here today. I didn't see either of the two regular season meetings, but. McKinsey attacking was fouled and it'll count and Genny will pick up her fourth foul as well. You know, that's one thing you got to be looking at is the players that are in foul for Spring Lake Park. They're sitting in that zone. You got to find the gaps and attack their zone right now. There is another look. It's the fourth foul and they counted the bucket for McKinsey as well. So one free throw coming for Adalia here, 14 points for her. Average 28 a game during the regular season. I mean, that is a high total. You don't see that very often in high school basketball for girls or boys to, to you know, you see players get 28 on a certain nights, but to average that's pretty impressive. Nice reverse layup there on the baseline cut by Jocelyn Talso. See, that's, that's a fun thing what Spring Lake Park is doing right now. They're, their outside game is working for them, and they're also finding the uh, you know some reverses, some backdoor cuts to the basket, and getting some bonus points inside, too. McKinsey with the miss. Panthers, an opportunity to try and take the lead, and we'll get a reach-in foul on Cox, which will be her third. Telso kind of briefly exposed the ball there and, and Kayla saw an opportunity to go for it, but got a little bit of a bump too, it looked like. Off the inbound play, they swing it around, but good recovery by PC. Park Center leading it by one. Spring Lake Park making a little push here early in the second half, trying to take the lead, and they went for another backdoor cut, but the pass was just off target. There wasn't really a great angle to get that one there. I think that help side for Park Center on defense has to be a little more active. They're, they're pulled out because they're trying to defend the three, but then they're giving up those backdoor cuts inside, and if there's help there, you should be able to recover on a skip if they're going to skip it. Frost keeps the dribble alive, and the floater one goes. She gets it right back herself, and then I think was fouled. Yeah, they're going to call foul there on Dunbar. She reached in to try and tie her up, but got some arm as well. Spring Lake Park fans didn't see it that way. They were looking for a jump ball, but instead it'll be a foul on Park Center basketball on the baseline. She's picked up her third foul now too, so. Yeah, that'll be a travel yep. there on Ragulin. To be honest, there's a few Pirates who got a little bit of a suspect first step. There were a couple other times when I thought they might get called for a travel, too. Yeah, exactly. Barb Metcalf's been through the, the wars for most of it in North Dakota, but uh, last year obviously here with Park Center as well and knows that somehow these playoff games, even against teams that you've already defeated, have a way of being tougher. It just We've seen it time and time again, the girls and boys side. Shot was blocked, but here's an opportunity, and the lead is taken by Spring Lake Park as Dunbar buries a three. Panthers by two. Cox looking to answer, in and out. Griffin got her hands on the rebound, but the Panthers out of there with it as Dunbar. And Gene is out, so Nino coming back in. She picked up three fouls in relatively limited playing time in the first half, too. In fact, the fouls in the second half are five for Spring Lake Park, one for Park Center. Dunbar stepping in, short with that one, and PC looking to push it back. Ragulin to McKenzie. Snuck down the baseline, now over to Cox. Ragulin will shoot a long three, short, couple of bounces, and Frost quick with her hands to win that fight for the rebound. Ragulin will shoot another one up, and this one is good. Park Center's back in front. Nice time for her first hoop. <laughs> Ooh, that was a... 
Well, and we're going to get a tie up there as they lost the dribble. Looked for their first one blocked, but it came right out for an open look by Dunbar and put Spring Lake Park in lead. You can see their bench is psyched, but Ragulin wasn't hesitating. She missed a three earlier in that possession, but then got it back and calmly stepped up and made it. Griffin to McKenzie. Nice move and scores. Made it look easy, avoiding the defender there. You know, and that's what Park Center has to do. They have to start getting back to that. You've, you've got your outside, but you've got your passes. Ooh. Griffin will be called for the blocking foul there. Number two on Griffin. See uh, Leah Sheedlow coming in, so Spring Lake Park going a little deeper into their bench, uh, partly with that foul situation, I'm sure. Ten forty to go here. Park Center back in front now by three after Spring Lake Park briefly grabbed the lead. Joel Talso crossover and then back out. Sheedlo just in wasn't going to take that one. Down low and Nino gets the layup. They gambled for the steal and didn't get it. So the lead is back to one now for Park Center. To the corner, Griffin for three is short. And there's Frost tracking it down from behind. We can see that one developing. Yes. Dribbler didn't see her coming. McKenzie down the baseline. Ooh, an offensive foul on McKinsey warding off with the left arm a little bit. I think a couple times she's kind of forced things on the baseline. Mm -hmm. there, there's not a, quite a lot of room to really get anywhere. And then you, oh. yeah, she did throw the arm out a little bit. Yeah, that was, she does. She, she gets going and, and she sees, but I think if they, they kind of move the ball a little more and come back, it's going to be a little more open for her to take that attack to the bucket. Yeah, you like the aggression. I don't mean to, right. to say that she shouldn't be driving that ball for sure. But uh, so 42-41 lead here for Park Center. You know, in a lot of ways, if the Pirates go on to win this one, and obviously it's a huge if right now, but sure uh, I think being tested a lot in the semifinals is probably going to be a good thing for which either whichever team comes out of this instead of, you know, breezing through and thinking everything's just going to be smooth and nice going into that final. I agree. I, I've, I've been in the situation where you've been able to go in twice and your, your, your first two games were kind of blowouts, and then you got to go up against a really talented team, and you, you, that, that makes it a little tougher. You know, you want to prepare and, and, and be able to go against the competition. You obviously like walking away with the wins no matter what, but I agree with you. I think a little tougher game in the semifinals makes it a little better for you to prepare for the finals. Park Center just has to get a little more patient. They still got to start controlling the boards uh, more. And, and then Spring Lake Park's got to just keep doing what they've been doing. Haven't really talked about it all that much, but both of these teams are very young, too. Park Center does not have a senior playing, and really only one that's playing a lot for Spring Lake Park. Joel Talso stops and nails the jumper right there for the Panthers, and they go back in front. McKenzie looking for the answer, but it wouldn't go. Talso bringing it up court. And that one is way too strong, but Nino grabs a rebound and then missed from close range. But a foul on the next rebound try, I think on Frost. That'll be the second on Lauren Frost. He, team fouls evening up quite a bit here. I think sometimes when the kids are trying to tip it back and block it back and they come across the arms, that's where they're picking up their fouls, and I, I don't think they realize that. Joel Talso the miss. McKenzie yanks the rebound out of there, and here she comes up court. Nice dish to Ragulin in the corner, but it's short. Griffin attacks the rebound and scores. 
That's what we've been missing from Park Center today. Their their attack on the missed baskets. We haven't seen a lot of that, and that's been some of the, that's been a lot of their success this year is how they've attacked the offensive boards. 8.45 to go. Park Center back in front by one. This has been a very entertaining section semifinal, and we're going to have a timeout requested by Spring Lake Park. They felt their dribbler, Nino, was in a little bit of trouble. There's a look as Ragulin misses. Watch Griffin get to this board and then just puts it up quick. Just no hesitation, grab, score. You know, and tanae has got that nice long lankiness with her and her arms, and they can come out of there, and she can split that seam like she did there, and you got a board. She's on the inside. If she doesn't score, she's going to get fouled and go to the line. Yeah, and that's what we, especially with McKenzie and Griffin, you want to get the block out on them out high, we'll not allow them to kind of get a running start for the rebound because you are not going to beat them to the board if, if it's just a, you know, a no blockout situation. Exactly, and, and, and like I said earlier, that's been some of their strengths on how they've attacked those offensive boards. And, and have been able to put them back up. And we need to see, for them to be successful, they need to see a lot more of that the rest of this game. But I love the composure and, and how Spring Lake Park is sticking to their plan. And, you know, like Coach said earlier, we're going to take threes, but they're, they're getting some good inside twos also. Yeah, I agree. They've, you know, a lot of times an underdog team, they're playing well, they get ahead maybe, and, and then if things start to go the other way, you can kind of crumble a little bit, but we haven't seen that at all. From no, them. not at all. Spring Lake Park basketball here after the timeout. Defender fell, and Talso airballed it, but then a standing shot there by LeVon. I don't think she left the floor, just a little set shot. And puts it back in, so Spring Lake Park up by a point. And I don't think Park Center's panicked when they've found them a little adversity either. There's a nice drive and finish by McKenzie. I think that's the one thing with her when she attacks like she just did there from the seam and then split the defenders. It's like they got to be careful because they know how quick she's coming and they move late. Then it's a foul on them. And I think when she can get an angle that where she's able to use the glass too, it's, it's really going to be beneficial to score. I mean, that's pretty unstoppable from about six feet where she shot that one from. Exactly. You know, I don't think kids sometimes, I think they, they try and do some of the other shots. I think they need to use the glass a whole lot more than I see them using it these days. Nice steal by McKenzie, but then the pass was tipped and was behind Frost. Panthers get it right back. They find the cutter, yep. and Tulsa was fouled by Frost. That'll be the third on Lauren Frost, and probably saved a hoop, though. Yeah, that one yeah. was no argument there. <laughs> that See, was it, all arm. It, and that's the thing. When, when coaching and teaching kids, you're telling them, do not come down like that. Don't slap down, because even if you miss, it sure looks like it, and that goes against you more than it's going to go for you. And that's a conversation I think coaches are always having with <laughs> kids. Is A lot of times kids don't understand. If it looks like a foul, it's probably going to be called one. It's very possible that you got all ball, but... Exactly, if, exactly. So uh, Spring Lake Park unable to take advantage of the free throws. Always tell so missed them both. So Park Center still leading by one. Griffin with the drive and the travel. She tried to split between a couple defenders. What Park Center has to do right now is after situations like that is they just got to get back and play defense. They, they can't dwell on it. They just got to play. Joel Telso back out. Ragulin getting up, defending very hard there, but Panthers able to get the pass away. Dunbar. Keeps attacking, spinning. That'll be a travel the other way, I think. Yep. Good defense by Ragulin. So Park Center bringing it up court with a one point lead as we approach the seven minute remaining mark here in this second half, getting a mighty test here from fourth seed Spring Lake Park. 
Here's McKenzie from the free throw line, attacking, no good. Rebounded by Falvey. Joel Telso on the drive, scores, plus a foul. Big hoop for Telso there. She missed a couple free throws a moment ago, but this time able to get it to drop. You know, and you see the Springlar kids becoming more confident, like in this drive. Okay, I'm, I'm going at them. They're, they're, they're in this game. And misses for the third time in a row. They briefly had the rebound, but then yanked away by Cox. So a one-point lead here for Spring Lake Park. Cox with a floater down the baseline. Wouldn't go. Knocked out of bounds by Park Center. So Spring Lake Park will keep possession. Kelso gets a screen, she'll stop and pop, and she hits. Relatively simple play, but it worked well, and Spring Lake Park's up by three. Griffin turns and shoots a 16-footer, no. And out of bounds off of Frost. And we're gonna see a timeout taken by Park Center. Nice hoop here by Kelso, just you know, it's nice when you have a point guard that has some size like that, too, that can just rise up and shoot that, uh, you know, 10, 12 footer. Well, yeah, and that's, I just like how all the different things that Spring Lake Park has pulled out, you know, how they've taken their game inside, how they've taken their game outside. They haven't gotten rattled, you know, and, and obviously it's paying to their advantage right now with what we're seeing on the scoreboard. And you really have the feeling that they believe they could win this game, too, and that's, you know, first and foremost what you have to, have to feel like coming in. It hasn't been, uh, you know, I, they just, they haven't blinked at any point in terms of, you know, like, oh my gosh, we're falling behind or, oh, we're ahead, now what, or anything either. No, and, and, and actually their, their confidence, they're, they're becoming more confident as the game is progressing. I think this is a time where you really see what Park Center, how are they gonna react to this too when you fall behind? I mean, it's one thing to fall behind by, you know, a point or two or three in the first half, but exactly. we're kind of down not quite to crunch time yet, but certainly getting there with a little over six to go. Right, right. You know, and it's like, you know, coach has got to talk, call them in and settle them down and, and, and say, we, we got to get back to our game plan. What is our plan? What's working for us? Let's not be too aggressive in, in, in making the stupid fall, as I always call them. Uh, let's be clean on our defense and let's work. Looks like Park Center is going to come out with a little pressure now. And it's a tough place to get the ball inbounded, too. You're not on the baseline. You're way in the corner. Oh, and they got it up up high there to Joel Talso. She's done a pretty good job handling pressure today, it feels like. Now, and Yenny is back in there, driving, and was fouled. Cox will be called for her fourth. So, and Yenny has been on the bench quite a bit today with foul issues, but confident drive to the hoop there. Oh, it looks like they might be calling it on the floor, so not a two-shot foul, but a one-and-one. One. A little surprising. I felt like she was going up in the shooting motion there. And she misses. So Park Center gets a little bit of a break, perhaps, there. They're down three as they bring it up court. Ragulin. Sink in there now, back out to Frost. Griffin trying to go to McKenzie, and it's last touch by the Panthers. Looked like Richard maybe could have grabbed that ball, but she thought it was gonna be out off Park Center. Yeah, actually, I thought the way he signaled in the beginning, he was saying it was. Yeah, I did too. Frost giving it back to Griffin, a long two from the baseline, no good. Frost, another rebound. Here comes Griffin on the drive, and it's an offensive foul on Tane Griffin. Went with the floater there, and defender was set. Another look at this one. So a player control foul, no free throws. 5.20 to go, and 
The three is Ooh. up and good by Jocelyn Talso. And now a six point lead for Spring Lake Park. Frost giving it up to McKinsey. McKinsey will shoot up a three and it's short. And out of bounds with Sink as she tried to save it. It'll be Spring Lake Park basketball. And another look at this. Boy, you're thinking, oh, we're, we're protecting a lead here and a confident shot by the senior. Well, look how far back she was from the three when she shot that one, too. And we will get a foul on Griffin as Talso crossed over in front of her, and that'll be number four on Tanae. So Ruben will come in, Griffin sits down. Spring Lake Park free throws are gonna be real important down the stretch. Talso's played a nice game, but not at the line, 0 for 4. And makes this one though. Biggest lead of the day for Spring Lake Park, and you see the little worry and frustration setting in on uh, the face of some of the Pirates here. Still a lot of time to go. And that's what they need to understand. There's a lot of ball game. You just got to go out and play ball. Kelso misses a second, so the lead stays at seven. Ragulin with it out top. Lauren Frost. Nice hesitation dribble and finishes with the left hand. Wow. I think every defender thought she was pulling it back out. She's really smooth with that's one of her favorite moves. And this time no good for Jocelyn Talso. I think that's Lauren's first basket without a free throw, isn't it? Shooting it up here, no good. I think that was a little too fast that time. I think if they would have stuck down and did what they did before, they, she would have had a better opportunity. Double coming, but they get it out. Under four minutes to go now. Spring Lake Park leading it by five. And Jocelyn Telsa will take it again, and she hits the three with the assist to her sister. She's made three threes in this second half. Coming up huge, it's an eight-point game. Here's McKenzie attacking and left it short. And a bad pass there. Let's see. It's going to be out off of Ruben, though. Nice save by Dunbar. Really bailed out her teammate who threw a not great pass there. Cox and Griffin coming back in for Park Center. Joel Talso driving it here and kicks it back out. Right now, Spring Lake Park's going to try and just take a little time off the clock, make sure they get a really good shot right now. And I mean, they got an eight-point lead, so they don't need to. Oh, that was probably not qualified as a good one. Couple cracks at it, though, and Gennie not able to finish. She had three shots in a row, and it'll be Park Center ball. And yeah, that's always that fine line. They've been playing confident and aggressive, and uh, at what point do you say we don't need anything but a really great shot? Yeah, that's true. That's true, because will that mess up with their, their rhythm? But I think it's like they had been patient and getting good shots on their, uh, on their looks with their offense. They need to keep doing that. Foul on McKenzie there, trying to knock it away after Griffin missed the three. So we'll head back to the other end. Here again, we're talking about how important free throws are going to be down the stretch here. Spring Lake Park has really, despite having this nice lead, have left some points at the line. They have. They really have. And that's, you know, as a coach, you're, a coach, you're cringing. This is where you can pad your, your, your score right here. And Gene knocks this one down. Foul trouble has eliminated her court time today, but... Uh, Making some plays down the stretch for her team. Ten point lead for Spring Lake Park. This one's kind of taken a stunning turn a little bit late. Uh, because, you know, it was kind of back and forth, a one point game either way for quite some time. And, but uh, down the stretch, Park Center's gone cold and Spring Lake Park's continued to score. No good there. And Gene the rebound and gets it out of there. 
Again, the double team coming. Let's see, did they call timeout? Yeah, yep. so I think coach sensed that the dribbler Dunbar might be in a little bit of trouble there, so he calls the timeout from across the way. Boy, the Spring Lake Park fans are excited. You know, you don't want to, it's like you don't really want to let loose too much yet because you still got a lot of time to go, but uh, they're, they're really feeling good right now. Well, they are. They, they've got a 10-point lead, and, and, and their kids are playing their game, and and, and you're seeing shots go up at Park Center. They're not going in, and Spring Lake Park's pulling the rebound down. So they, they have stuck to their game plan. It's kind of exhibit A. We'll you know, talk about in the future if you talk about you know, a game you can't overlook that you don't say, well, okay, they beat them by 20, they beat them by 25, therefore we're going to pencil them into the final. That, that's just not how it happens no. in, in uh, this sport or a lot of sports, especially at the high school level. But, I mean, obviously even beyond, you look at some of the – you know, NCAA men's and women's tournaments, oh. and you'll see some upsets, too. Well, you know, I, I think, you know, everybody loves to get that one seed because you think, okay, I'll get the eight, then I'll play the four or five, but four or five's dangerous, you know, and, and like you said earlier, you, you get the other seed, and you, you probably have semifinal tough game, championship tough game right up in there, and, you know, come tournament time, it, it doesn't matter what anybody's record. You can't look past anybody. And I don't really believe Park Center's looked past. I, I, I just think uh, Spring Lake Park has really executed their game plan. And their threes that they've been hitting have been great. Inbounded to Ngene, looking to hand it over now to Joelle Talso. Raglan all over her, drives, no good, but a foul. And it taken advantage as Raglan, they switched the smaller guard onto her there and just kind of muscled her to the hoop a little bit. When I, I'm thinking, you know, Spring Lake Park right now, it's like, we don't need the threes right now, so we're going to get our baskets by driving under the bucket because we're getting fouled and we're getting an opportunity. If we don't score the bucket, then we are at the free throw line. And this free throw, good. Well, we just saw the example there. The, it doesn't really mesh with the, the, what the score is, that Spring Lake Park's the team that's really struggled at the line, whereas Park Center has, has been efficient in that regard and goes one for two again. So an 11 point game, McKinsey, a pull up from 15 in and out, and then out of bounds off McKinsey as she tried to keep it alive. I know you want to probably get a couple quick buckets, but you need to get everybody involved right now and, and, and move the ball a little more. Get, get Spring Lake Park to work harder on defense. And what do we have here? Oh, it's gonna be an offensive foul against Dunbar. Driving that ball, they really didn't need that shot there, but sometimes you're kind of almost pressured into trying to take a layup here. Right, right. Mm, mm, well, That's going to be her fourth, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And a little bit iffy and looking at that replay. It looked like they were still moving, but anyway, Park Center basketball here. Approaching two minutes to go. They're down inside, and Griffin gets the layup from Frost. And a timeout taken by Barb Metcalf as her team to within nine. This one definitely not over yet. Well, right now. Nice drive and dish by Frost and Griffin flashing open and scoring it. And right now Park Center's talking about it. I would anticipate they're going to come out with some pressure, full court pressure here. And, you know, they've got to be smart with their pressure, uh, try and get a turnover, but don't put them at the free throw line. Don't commit a foul real quick. Um, Spring Lake Park, they're coming in here right now saying, okay, we just got to get the ball in, move the ball, make them follow us. Make them follow us to stop the clock. And I think, actually, they've done quite well at not being pressured into turnovers. You know, I mean, obviously they've had some, Spring Lake Park, but they, I, th I feel like they've handled the pressure better than maybe I would have anticipated. I agree. I think in the beginning we saw quite a bit of turnovers actually on both sides, but I think Spring Lake Park has settled down and not committed some of the ones. Joel Talso up the left side. Oh, here comes the double, and it was just out of bounds. Ragulin snuck in and got the steal, but it was uh, had a foot on the sideline there, so almost got the turnover. Joel Talso. Jocelyn Talso, she's made us some big threes. And a nice catch on that one. She's going to shoot a three again, oh. and she hits. She is on fire. Oh, my goodness. 12-point lead for the Panthers. Griffin looking to answer. Too strong. 
And then a foul on Frost on the rebound, and that will be the fourth on Lauren. Boy, I'm thinking to myself here, really, are you going to shoot this one in this situation? But she made it. She, she's felt good from that spot all night long. So Richard will shoot here for Spring Lake Park. 0 for 1 today at the line. I think when you see this lead balloon a little bit, it sort of takes a little bit of the pressure off on these free throws. If it was a two-point game, it's a, you know, a little bit different. Exactly. You know, I mean, obviously they want him to go in, but. Again, one for two. McKenzie soaring for the rebound. McKenzie a pull up. No. Tipped loose. McKenzie gets it again. No good. She gets it one more time. Scores plus a foul. So. McKenzie sticking with it, and it ultimately actually works out better than if she had made the first shot because uh, she'll get a chance for a three-point play. Exactly. Richard picked up the foul. And in and out. Griffin keeping it alive. Park Center will get another crack. Frost brings it back out. Lauren Frost to the hoop, and she scores. Park Center making a little charge late here. Down by nine. Up the sideline, Joel Telso throws it away. Park Center will get it back here. Just under a minute, it's a nine point game. Well, and it's been kind of fun to watch Park Center right now as they're going, they're, they're attacking for the twos and not just trying to rely on the threes. You know, a couple of their last threes haven't been very effective. Roll it ahead to Ragulan so the clock doesn't start. Cotch, Ragulan traveled. Ooh, not a opportune time for that. Spring Lake Park though with a sideline inbound. Again, we said these are kind of tough. You got fans right near you too. And they turn it over. Cox will shoot a three, no good. McKenzie though rebounds and scores. And then a timeout for Park Center. They are to within seven. Pirate fans thought that, McK uh, that Cox was fouled on the three. And as it turns out, though, they get the rebound bucket anyway. Park Center making a late charge. Well, and right now, you know, Park Center's talking about what are we going to do to get this ball? Uh, you know, there, there's still time. They're, they're within seven. Spring Lake Park's sitting down. Okay, we're going to get the ball in. We get we got a seven-point lead right now, ladies. We got to get the ball in, get it up court, take care of the ball. You know, make them follow us, put us in line. They've been successful at the line lately. So, um, see how see how Park Center responds as they come out of this timeout. Park Center also has to be careful that if they get the ball, you know, that they're making good decisions on their traps. But there will be a time that they're going to have to probably start following if, if they don't get a turnover here and, and score another bucket. See Griffin, how much this game means to her. A little tear coming out as she's uh, they're getting ready to make this push not time to give up yet that's for sure exactly and, you know and, and there's where you talk about both teams being young and and where they're at with it it's like you got to keep your composure now you know it's 49 seconds but 49 seconds can take a while you're an explosive team you've been able to do some of these things and they're going to come long with the inbound to Ngeni. Smart play to just hang on to it there I think they're going to hang Center on make them follow us hard with yep. pressure and They'll get a foul call there as Jocelyn Talso will go to the free throw line. She's been lights out from three. We'll see what she can do at the line. She made a pair in the first half, but that's it. And that's going to be Kayla Cox picking up her fifth. But at this point in the game, you have to do what you have to do. Right, exactly. And, and actually, there's, they're all in foul trouble right now, so... Jocelyn Talso's free throw is good. What a second half she has had. Wow, she's made four threes, 14, 15 points in the second half. She's, she's been the, the, the big difference in this second half for sure. 
and makes two clutch free throws there. So the lead back to nine now for the Panthers. McKenzie driving it. Short with that one. Fight for the rebound. Knocked out by Spring Lake Park's Telso. 35 seconds remaining. Inbounded to Griffin. She'll shoot a three. It's short. Sink grabs the rebound. Missed it, though. And then a foul on Ragulin trying to get to that ball. It'll be her fifth, I believe, as well. So free throws for Avery Dunbar for Spring Lake Park. And free throw not good. Second opportunity, and also no good, so they've been not great at the line, but enough to keep this lead. Nine point lead. Here's a long three, and it's good by Frost. And then we get a quick foul called on Frost. Wait, just when you start to think it might be over, they make a three. It's a six point game. That's a fifth on Frost as well. Fouls out with 11 points. And Joelle Talso will shoot here for Spring Lake Park. She's been good, but not real good at the line today. But again, they've done enough to uh, keep this lead. Well, she's had big sister that's done a lot of work for him today, so that's helped. And making just one was really important there because it makes it a, a two possession game. Second free throw also good. So eight point lead. Looks like Spring Lake Park might pull this one off for sure here as we go under 20 seconds. Ruben will shoot the three and Genny the rebound. And the Panthers will bring it up court. And they won't need to shoot again. Spring Lake Park has knocked off the top seed Park Center. 67 to 59, and boy, are they excited about it. You know, Coach came into this game, and he was saying, you know, our kids needed to play a good game. Um, they didn't discredit. They just knew how talented Park Center was, but they stuck to their game plan, you know. And and the thing for them, he says, we're going to shoot a lot of threes, but not only did he shoot the threes, they were in the, getting inside and making the twos. So they, they played their game plan, and it paid off for them. Uh, good composure down the stretch, too, for Spring Lake Park. There were times when they could have crumbled, but they really didn't. And uh, they will score a big upset here. 67-59 Spring Lake Park. So congratulations to the Panthers as they will move on to the section finals. We saw to play either Centennial or Roseville. Those teams about to take the court. Congratulations to Park Center on a great season. Obviously, very disappointing ending for them today. You can see that on their faces. And... Uh, uh, a very, very young team. They're going to be a force in the years to come, but this one certainly stings today. It sure does. And, and you know, like you said, they're young, but it doesn't even take away. I mean, whoever lost today either side, it, it hurts. You know, you're done. And they, they had a great season, though. So that'll do it for this afternoon's contest here. And once again, your final score, fourth seed, Spring Lake Park, knocking off number one seed, Park Center, 67-59 for Allie Arlt and Patty Sorensen and all of our two MJ Wilcox so long from Blaine High School.